Hey, what's up? Hey, this is Paul from Swarfworks. I have an installation video here for the uh, hidden winch mount on the Ram TRX for the 21 newer TRX. And let me just go over the parts real quick here and show you what we got. So uh, in the kit, here's the center main frame mount. Um, then there's two outer pieces that go on the frame horns. One's marked with a P for passenger side, obviously. Got a couple uh, plates here that are for the skid plate mounts and they're also marked with driver and passenger. And there's a couple other brackets here for the, the bottom of the bumper and um, hardware pack, some nuts and bolts. And then we have uh, the bracket here for the oil cooler to relocate, relocate that because it's mounted right in the way of the winch right now. So that's what these two pieces are. And then in the kit also will include this fan that we can wire up to one of the outfitter switches or, um, and this mounts to these, these brackets here so we can force some air through the oil cooler since it won't have as direct of a, a line of air coming through it. And then uh, there's also an optional uh, light that I just take a Baja Designs rock light and just solder on um, the right connector for the winch. So in this installation, I'm using a uh, Warren Xeon Platinum 10S. So the synthetic line, 10,000 pound Xeon Platinum winch. So the difference between the Platinum and non-Platinum is the uh, remote feature. So I really like these winches for the hidden winch setups because not only do we have a wireless remote control for the line in and line out, but also for the uh, clutch disengagement on the free spool. So because they're, they're hidden, uh, you can do it with a le normal lever clutch. You just have to reach under there and uh, in between the frame rail and the skid plate to do that. Um, you can do it, it's just a lot more convenient with this. So obviously the winch isn't included in the kit, but all the rest of this is. So I have the skid plate off. You can probably see it sitting back there. Uh, just four bolts, comes off pretty easy. And then uh, we'll get taking the bumper off here and get going. All right, so one of the first things we can do is um, unhook the splash shields from the um, frame and then get those out of the way, then we can get to the electrical. All right, now that we got those splash shields out of the way, we can go ahead and undo the connector over here on the driver's side. So it has a little red tab, just push that tab in and then uh, rotate the cam part of that around. Let me get a picture of it here. So if you haven't already, uh, take the skid plate off and get that out of your way. There's just uh, four bolts on that. So now we'll get to the bumper. So the bumper has uh, three nuts on each side. Uh, I believe they're 21, I'll check here, but um, accessed from underneath in the back side. All right, so now we got the six nuts off there, wires disconnected, the splash shield's removed, bumper should come off. Let's test that out. And what do you know? Let me just set this over here out of the way. All right, so now that we got the bumper off, we can go ahead and move this oil cooler uh, air shroud here mount. So there's a couple bolts back here on the frame that are 13 millimeter heads. But before we do that, there's a couple 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom of this. So we'll do that, move the intercooler off there, and then take this stuff off. All right, so now the shroud's out of the way. We're gonna actually use a couple parts off of this, these little clips. So we'll set that aside. And then uh, the bolts for the oil cooler here, we'll uh, reuse those too. So uh, next thing we can do is 
is take off the uh, this little drain um, shroud thing for the oil filter. Uh, you can leave the shock reservoirs in place, but this thing is just going to be in the way. All right, now that we have all that out of the way, the uh, only other thing that we need to move is the uh, tow hooks right now. So we'll take this out, I'll explain a little bit. They're the bigger one here, pulled all the way out, 21 millimeter head, the 18 millimeter one in the back. When you take that one all, all the way out, it has a clip up high and it's a really long bolt. It has a clip up there to keep it from dropping all the way down. So it'll drop down and then, I've already taken mine out, but they drop down and then just put a wrench on there and just tap a wrench on top of it and it'll fall right out. All right, let me go over the oil cooler relocation part of this. Um, have this bracket here, we have the, this bracket here. So this one will bolt to the uh, cross member. Let's, we'll put the fan on here first and then uh, show you how this all mounts. So there'll be four, four screws and nuts here in the kit to mount the fan to this bracket. So we'll do that. All right, so now that we got the fan mounted to this bracket, um, what you need to do is take this little um, rubber channel thing that was off the plastic bracket and we're going to mount it to this one. So we'll reuse the factory nuts on that one too, 10 millimeter head. All right, so now we got the fan bracket, we got this bracket in place. Um, I really smashed my oil cooler at the sand dunes. Um, and it's, it's all bent up. So I got a brand new one here. I'm gonna show you on this one. It will work, the lines actually pivot in these uh, couplings. So the lines, you kind of might have to just rotate them around a little bit, but this, this one's so mangled that it, uh, it wouldn't even fit. So this plastic U piece goes on there. And then we'll take this new bracket, slide it on the front of that, reuse our bolts. All right, so that's how that uh, oil cooler mounts in there. Um, I'll have to, I forgot to bring my things. You don't have to undo this, so just kind of ignore that. But this one was so bent up that I couldn't even mount it on here. So you won't have to undo the lines. I didn't have to when I've done it before. So 
Uh, we'll work on the wiring and I'll talk about the fan rotation and all that stuff. I'll just tuck this up out of the way for now. I'll go ahead and finish tightening this up. All right, so there's a couple different ways you can mount the, the winch mount up here. I like to do it in three different pieces. I actually mount these outer pieces up on the frame horns and then bolt the center piece up into it. So we can do that a couple ways. We can um, temporarily use a, a few of these half inch bolts uh, onto the, the face of the frame horn here. So obviously the D on here is for the driver's side. So now we can secure it a little bit better with the tow hook. Um, all right, so now that we got those brackets on, lined up with the slots, pretty good. I mean, they're not perfect, but uh, pretty darn close. The bolts will go through there. So this is an option I sell. It's just a Baja Designs rock light that I just put the connector on it to plug into the Warren ZN winch. Um, if you use a different winch, then you'd have to run this to an outfitter or something. So I'm gonna install this real quick. It just mounts, uh, mounts right here on the top, underneath obviously. So then when you turn it on, you can see how your uh, line's spooling on. So I'm gonna install that real quick. All right, so now we've got the brackets on and the drum light on, we can mount this centerpiece up in here. So I usually like to do it on a floor jack. I put the truck up on ramps just to kind of help with the camera and stuff. I usually don't do that. So usually I could just set it on my knees. So I'm gonna struggle with a little bit more than you should, but um, here we go. So on the TRX, we'll mount this in the upper position. There's uh, a, uh, two holes here. So the TRX will be upper position, about a half an inch difference. So if you need that adjustment for some reason, if you're bumper, but. All right, so now that we got the centerpiece in, um, now we need to take these, these temporary bolts we put in there out. These will be used in the backside uh, for the skid plate bracket. So we got the tow hook on here to keep it mounted in place. So we'll remove these bolts. All right, so we got those bolts out now. They won't be in the way of the bumper. Um, it moved a little bit, but the bolts still can go in and out of there. So we're good as far as that goes. Um, so the next thing is uh, we're going to mount the uh, one of the Fairlead shim stacks in here and then um, then we'll get the winch in there. So this this is the first one that goes on. There's four shims there, two big, two smaller ones. It's going to go right on here um, and these slots give you some adjustment um, to where, where the Fairlead will come out of the bumper. So I'll get it on here. I'll try to leave in the instructions um, maybe a measurement of, of where that is so you know where to start. But there's a couple Allen head screws here and some nuts. So there's that one. You can see there's quite a bit of adjustment when it comes to that. Um, and now, we'll uh, put the winch in. All right, so now we're ready to mount the winch. I just want to talk about how this mounts really quick because um, it's a little different. I've talked to Warren about this and they said it's no issue at all to do this. Um, so typically on a Jeep, you'd have it sitting like this, the logo goes forward. Um, it's coming out of the bottom of the drum. So what we need to do is we can't, because you'll see, I mean, it's gonna mount, the feet are gonna mount forward, which is, honestly the best way to do it because all your force is pulling forward, not trying to shear the bolts. So you think it would mount like this, but the issue with that is that the line is too low. So we can't go backwards on the drum. That's not good because then your brake 
screwed up and ins out, outs in. So we're not gonna do that. So we're actually just gonna spin it around. Yeah, let's do this. We're gonna spin it around this way. So now the worn logo, the front of the winch that would typically be facing the facing out is now facing down. So now it's still coming off the drum exactly the same way, but the line is up higher. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but if you don't do that correctly, the line will come off the bottom and wrap around instead of just coming off the top nice and smooth. So anyway, hopefully that made sense. I'll put it in the instructions on, on how that goes, but um, yeah, anyway, that's how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna lift it up in there, throw the two lower bolts in it. The upper bolts actually will be the ones that hold the Fairlead on through there, so I'll put the lower bolts on first. All right, so now we got the bumper here, ready to start getting that mounted up. But first, uh, there's a couple plastic pieces on the corner that go right under here, just little uh, kind of filler things. I found out just taking those off is your best bet. Um, you can do it, but you'll fight around with it a lot trying to get it slipped back under there. I just take them off, I, you can't hardly tell, but um, if you really desire to, you should be able to keep them back on. But I like to just get rid of them. So there you can see what that is. It just has three little push-in tab things and they just pop right out. All right, so now for the bumper modification here. There's a couple things you gotta modify. Uh, this metal, this fairly thin metal um, sheet metal here. Obviously the winch mount comes out, so this needs to go. Um, I'll show you where to cut on that. Basically just cut the center piece out and then the TRX has this uh, plastic baffle in here to direct air towards the oil cooler. Um, and that also needs to, I cut that piece out, just a little cutoff wheel. And then I went from, you can see where just those holes are, just inside those, there's a cross member here. So both sides. And then that also, should give us enough room to wiggle this thing out. We might have to loosen up a couple of these bolts to wiggle this out, but this piece will come out as well. All right, so now um, to get this plastic piece out of here, I just took out a couple of these bolts. There's two right there, two there, and then three of the Torx bolts on top, and then this whole end piece here comes off. So then we can take that out. So we'll hang on to that if we want to put it back to stock. But then you can also see that's how you change this grill piece out uh, if you wanted to swap this back out. Um, this is pretty cheap, I, I can't remember. It seemed like right from RAM it was like 80 bucks or something. So this is the piece we'll end up cutting for the Fairlead. So if you wanted to go back to stock, you know, hang on to that, replace that. This metal piece in here, uh, I mean, you could get a new one, but uh, you could put it back together with it still, with the piece still cut out of it. So anyway, there you go. All right, now that we got that uh, piece cut out of the back and the plastic part removed, um, first thing we need to do here before we put the bumper back on is, is get the winch uh, tightened up on the bottom. So what I did is I dropped this piece, I actually left it loose for now. I dropped it down all the way. So what we'll have is a, a shim stack like this, that's pinned together, and then uh, a few loose shims. So these you can adjust depending on how far you want that fairly to stick out. So what we'll wanna do is put this in here now, tighten it up a little bit on the front, on the top, so we can tighten the bottom. That way the winch will be in there properly, and then we can put the bumper on, cut it out, and then put these bolts back in here. So one thing about these bumpers, and, and I'm not a big fan of, let me see if I can see it here. Um, these bolts that mount the bumper, where am I? Um, 
these bolts that mount the bumper just have a little clip on them. So if you really try to shove it in there and um, say those front plates aren't quite lined up, you'll just push these bolt and it'll just push it right through that clip and it really sucks. Then you have a loose bolt to deal with. So just be careful when you put those on, take it easy. That's why I like taking these plastic pieces off the top. It just makes it go on so much easier. All right, so it's sitting there. Um, you kind of use the tow hooks to help balance it. Um, and then we'll want to tighten it up first before we start cutting this. But it'll give you a lot better idea where we need to cut the relief for the fair lead in there. So I'm going to go on the back. I'm going to put uh, maybe just one of the nuts on there just to tighten it up and go from there. All right, now that we got the bumper tightened up, uh, I just got one nut on there right now in case that didn't sound good. Just in case I got to take it back off. Um, so now we can see where the bolts come through for the fair lead. If I grab one of those, sometimes you can kind of get it in there. So anyway, we can take the fair lead, set it up there, kind of see where we need. I can just pair of, pair of dikes. I don't know why it's a pair of dikes, not just a dike. Anyway. Uh, to snip around there and uh, cut that plastic out. So I'll show that now. So let me correct that a little bit. So we won't cut out the full size of the fair lead. We'll just cut out the size of this shim, which is a little bit smaller than the fair lead. So that way these can slide right through. The fair lead will kind of cover up your um, cut. All right, now that we got the fair lead mounted up and nice and tight, um, best part, the beautiful Factor 55 hook. Um, you don't have to run it on this, obviously. The fair lead, you really do need to run the Factor 55 one, depending on what kind of fair lead your winch comes with. Uh, the worn one for the Xeon is too tall. It would hit right here. So I do like that for that. And here we go. All right, so once I get the power cables on there, I'll wind it up tight and it'll sit on there just like that. So um, I gotta do the power cables and then um, plug in my bumper, put those little shields on there. And then obviously in this truck, I gotta uh, bring my tools in tomorrow and change that oil cooler. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, so uh, that pretty much does it. I'll wrap up uh, in the end here with a, a couple pictures probably. And uh, let me know if you got any questions. My email is paul at swarfworks.com. Shoot me a message if you're having trouble or whatever, and I'll even give you my cell phone number if you really get in a bind or something. But um, there you go. Thanks for watching. All right, so one thing I just thought about was the, the brackets for the bumper, the bottom of the bumper here, um, and also the skid plate mount. Uh, so there's four brackets. These ones, there's a, one that has a D on it, one that has a P on it, and these two, um, what this does is this replaces that little bracket that comes down for those Torx bolts on the bottom of that. Um, so that's what this does. But since that bracket's not there anymore, this is gonna bolt to the bottom of the winch mount. And then um, I'll, I'll have to probably put some overlay some drawings on here to show you how those go. But that's what the rest of that hardware is for. It just replaces that. This bolts to the, the winch mount and then this part comes down to this the lower part of the sheet metal on the bumper.
And then the skid plate bracket will mount to the main part of the mount where the another half inch hole here. And then this will have um, a bolt that bolts the skid plate to it. So obviously way stronger than the factory, which is awesome because the factory skid plate mounts suck. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll put some drawings on here so you can see it a little better. It's gonna be really hard to kind of see it underneath the truck here. So, um, all right, anyway, that's all. Okay, one more thing I just thought of. Um, so the fan on the oil cooler. So just run those wires up to the upfitter switch. Um, that's what I like to do anyway. Uh, you set way you can turn it on or off. Um, and then in the instructions, for some reason my box didn't have instructions in it, but you need to basically reverse the polarity on that. It's made to spin both ways, but you want it obviously to pull uh, or push through it. So I'll try to upload, put those uh, screenshot of that in there for you. And uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. So these ones, these ones, I think right in English. I can't even say that. Anyway, 